here's how you can make a tune material in Blender that responds to different colored lighting. I did a series of tutorials about getting a cell shaded tune look in Blender, and someone asked if there was a way to do the compositing in Blender instead of rendering out a bunch of luma mats and doing the compositing in After Effects. So I figured out a way to do everything in Blender using the compositing tab. That way your tune animations can have different colored lighting for effects, backlight, or key light. So let's get started. Okay, let's just get started. So to start with, let's just delete everything and then import an FBX file. I was using iClone to test motion capture of my face. So that's what this is. We basically have this character doing some talking and we're gonna tunify this one. And one of the first things we're gonna need to do before we set up those diffuse materials is just get this skin texture looking a little more tune-like. So if we go into the shader editor, we can see this is our skin material. And we're gonna just quickly do some edits with this diffuse material. If you click unpack item, say right to current directory, this is going to save it where you have your project file saved. And this is what that file looks like. So this is the face and it's sort of wrapped around this head here. So if we open that in Photoshop or any photo editing software, one of the things we can do is just take your paintbrush, hit Alt to choose a color, and we're just going to kind of get a single color on this face. And we're just gonna cover over everything. It's okay to go outside of the lines. Let's add a new layer. Let's do something with the mouth here. So this is drawing on an empty layer here, but sampling the colors from the lips, just to have some sort of subtle variation here on these areas. Let's also do the ears. And then I'm also gonna do another layer for eyebrows. And then let's just do a color like this and just kind of sketch in some eyebrows here like this. Something dark, just like when you're doing real eyebrows. Remember, they're sisters, not twins. So they don't have to be exactly alike. Okay, so now if we turn off, bring that layer beneath. Let's, this layer here, Let's add a filter blur, Gaussian blur, and just turn that way, way up. Just to make that color variation a little more subtle, something like that. And then we can save this. And then now let's open here. Let's take this copy, replace it. And then in this material, we can hit control, right click to do the knife tool, turn off the normal so we don't get that bump and then we also want to turn the roughness all the way up and then specular we want to turn that down and this is just going to give us a nice flat smooth base we are going to repeat that process for the eyes as well the next thing we're going to do is tab into edit mode here let's kind of hit alt select a ring around the neck let's actually do some faces hit x delete those faces. And so now we're gonna have two sort of meshes here. So if we hit L, we can select all of this, assign the body material, and then let's just add something that's like black and let's make it very shiny, something like that. If we hit P, we can also separate that selection so we can choose just the body here itself Let's add a solidify modifier. And that's just gonna make that a little more solid. And then let's also take these edges, turn on proportional editing, hit G and Z to sort of move that up a little bit and shrink it close to the neck. And now we kind of have a sort of semblance of a clothing here. There we go. That's just like a quick way to work with our materials. So here on the body or here on the head, we are going to make our regular tune material that was covered in the last tutorial. Delete this principled and we're gonna change this to multiply. Let's also add a sun. 
so we can see what is happening here. Let's rotate it along the x-axis. And then if it's not doing much, we can turn this up to like five or so. Change this to constant. And here we have this tune shader on our face here. So as you know from the last tutorial, once you have a material like this, if you add, let's say a point light, Let's move that up near the face and let's say it's red. You can see that on the tune materials, we're not getting any red spill on those. So if we want to add, you know, a scene and some type of backlight or spill that's of a certain color, we can't really do it with the tune shaders as they exist. And the workaround in the last tutorial was to render out multiple passes that just have, you know, different lights turned on and then use this Luma mat to composite it in After Effects. But I got some comments asking how to do this all within Blender. So I figured out a way and thought that I would share it. And the way to do that is this view layer up here. What we can basically do is duplicate our scene a couple times, render them out with different settings, and then composite them all here within Blender. So it is the same workflow. It's just this is a version that uses the compositing tab and does everything all within Blender. So let's get started setting that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's add a camera, kind of see what our shot's going to be. In viewport display, I like to turn up the passport too, so I only see what's in the camera. Let's change this to like 24 move it somewhat close. The head looks like it's at a bit of an angle, so let's square that up a little bit. So our shot can be something like this. Let's do an image as planes background and bring in this background image. Scale that up and move it back. We will just to kind of create some light back there. Actually, instead of rotating camera. Let's just rotate our character a touch. Scale it up. Tab into edit mode. I don't know if we're going to see any of this, but we can kind of just bring that forward and back like this just to give us something more like a room. Let's add a hue and saturation node in the material and move it to a more of like a cyan color, something like this. And then let's also bring that into the emission and set it to like 0.5. For our sun, we can turn off the shadows to get rid of the shadows on the background. So this is going to be our scene here. We have our armature, we have our background, we have our camera, and we have a sun. And we can call this base, and we can call this view layer base. So the one thing about this workflow is that you have to basically duplicate everything in your scene and then we're going to give it new material. So we're going to give it a tune material that's just black and white with the other lights and composite them together. But what that means is if I want to make a change to my animation or something, specifically this FBX file or this armature, I'm going to have to make that change in every single composition. So it's important to make sure that animation is super locked before setting this up. You can keep your camera outside of the compositions. So you can always make changes to your camera move um, and that's okay, but just make sure your animation is set up. In this case, also how many keyframes do we got here? We got a lot. Let's go to like 700, okay. First let's, make all of our duplicates here, and then we're gonna duplicate our view layer and turn certain things on and off. So let's duplicate collection. We'll call this key light, turn off this first one. And now we have a duplicate of all of our materials here. So on the head here, I'm going to create a new material. We'll call this tune shader, diffuse, and this is gonna be, you know, the same workflow from the other tutorial. Let's replace our material with this tune shader. This sun, we are going to delete. And within this key light, shift A, add a new point light. And let's kind of move it to the side of the face, something like this. So that's looking good. We can go into our mesh here. And for the 
tongue and teeth. Let's do the same thing with the tune shader, just so that we have it, you know, all as a tune. Let's also go to the eye and do the same thing there. This light, let's make it kind of like hot pink color. Turn up the intensity, something like that. Maybe we want a little roughness on there just to see the light a bit. And then we're also going to delete the background because <clears throat> we want just this part of the render. Also, let's quickly in our settings here, go to film and transparent so that each of these layers is going to have a transparent background. And then in color management, change it from AGX to standard. And that's just going to give us some more accurate colors for the tune. So here's the key light. So now let's duplicate that collection and call this backlight. Turn off the key light. This point, let's change it to an area light. Let's call this backlight or something. And then let's move it behind the character. We want this to be like a yellow color and just want it to kind of like touch the top of the head, come down over there. Let's keep shadows on because if we don't, it'll kind of shine through. But this is looking pretty good. So now we're going to duplicate this a couple times, this view layer, and have each one of these compositions turned on and then composite them back together. So let's duplicate this, copy settings. We'll call it backlight, duplicate copy settings, and we'll call it key light. So with key light highlighted here, we are going to right click view layer, disable from view layer, right click here, view layer, Right now it is enabled. Base, view layer, disable from view layer. So you can use the shortcuts E and Alt E as well. So we want just this layer on in the key light for the backlight. We have the backlight on, but let's hit E over these other two collections to turn them off. And then for our base, turn on the base and turn off these other two. So now we should have base, backlight, key light. Great. So now when we go into our compositing tab, hit use nodes, and you're going to have to quickly render one image. It looks like it's just the base layer at first, but that's okay. Once you've rendered one image, it's kind of all set up in here. Uh, if you have Node Wrangler installed, hit Control Shift click uh, to add a viewer node so you can see you can hit V to zoom out and Alt V to zoom in when you're in the compositing tab. Another thing I like to do because I'm going to add some compositing nodes in between here and I don't want to have to keep reassigning the viewer and composite, final composite to the same thing. So if you pull that out, start typing reroute, you can add a reroute node and then from there pull into each individual composite and viewer nodes. This is our render layers. So if we duplicate this twice, we can then set one to our key light, set one to our backlight. And now let's start compositing with nodes. We're gonna want a mixed color node, pull in our image from the top, image from the bottom, bring that into the viewer. And let's set that to something like screen. Duplicate it, do the same thing with the backlight. And now you can start to see where this light is going to be hitting our character. And we can add some more nodes to continue to hone in on what this looks like. So to start with, I'm gonna add an RGB curves node and put it between our base layer and the first screen here. And I'm just gonna darken it quite a bit. I'm also gonna take the red and bring that red down a touch and maybe the green as well. And then I'm also going to add a mix color node here as well. Let's make it like a cyan color and set it to overlay just to kind of really set the hue and the tone of our kind of base image before adding the lights on top. Here in our key light, shift A and add a color ramp. And now we can adjust this color. So if we set our white to kind of that hot pink color, we can see that now we have this colored tune lighting on our character. 
Shift A, add a color ramp to the backlight. Let's make it a gold color. And now we have multiple colors of light using a cell shaded tune like shader in Blender here. So this is the basic setup, but now we're just gonna add some more nodes to really fine tune this look and have it coming out of Blender looking beautiful. So I'm gonna start with this backlight because I want there to be a nice like glow to that backlight, like it's something kind of bright. And to do that, we can add a blur node. Drop it between our color ramp and our screen and then we can adjust the blur here. You can do each you know, X and Y position manually, or if you just click and drag the two of them, they will go together. So if we do something like 50, you can see that it's super blurred out. If we do something like five, it just softens the edges a little bit. But if we take the blur node and the screen node, duplicate it, kind of put this screen node back in there, pull from this color ramp again, and then have the second instance at like 25, we can start to really see a kind of like hazy glow there on that edge light. We can also change it to add to make it a little bit brighter if we need to. Um, and you can also adjust the intensity with this factor slider here. So you can really fine tune exactly how you want each light to look like when it's on the subject. Let's do the same thing here with our key light. Shift A, add a blur node. Let's do something like, oops, three. Not, nothing too crazy. Duplicate these nodes here. Complete that circuit. And then let's do something like 15. That'll soften it a little bit. I kind of really love that sort of bloom on highlights and lights in general. I just think it gives it this really kind of soft, organic kind of vintage-y feeling. And now we kind of have a mess of nodes here. So one way that we can organize our node tree, and this works in a shader editor as well, is highlight some nodes and hit Shift P, and that's gonna create a box around them. Up here in node, you can adjust the label too. So if you get something super complicated, this will help you, especially when you go back and say like, how did I have this all set up? So hit shift P and we'll call this key light and we'll call this backlight. And then that way we can kind of go through and make our adjustments to each of these lights as we go. There's a couple things that I also want to do to add to the overall look of the render. And that is a glare. So this is gonna be kind of like adding like a glow to everything. So if I set this to fog, make, make threshold different, adjust the size, what's that doing? And then let's also add a lens distortion node. So if we turn up the dispersion, that's gonna create a chromatic aberration on the edges. So if it's something crazy like one, it's gonna be super extreme. But if we set that down to like 0.025, it's just gonna create some aberration around the edges, I think that which also kind of softens the, the image a bit. So if we select that plus our reroute node, hit shift P, we can call this final looks, and then we can kind of keep everything organized that way. And this basically is the technique, which again, is the same workflow of using these individual Luma mats. And instead of compositing them in After Effects, we are going to composite them here in Blender. So if we go to any frame and then render that image, now it's gonna give us this composite here. Some other things we might wanna consider doing is when we are in our key light and have our mesh selected, we might wanna add a subdivision surface modifier. And that's just gonna smooth it out. If you can see, if you can see the edges here, that's just gonna smooth out the edges of our light a bit. We can also maybe move that light just a touch. You can make all of these adjustments in each of these view layers. So the backlight, we might also want to do a subdivision surface and that just makes this light a little bit smoother. We render that out and we have something like this. So some other things you can do are you can add like another light in the background to motivate this hair light here, or I mean, 
there's no hair, but you know what I mean, this edge light. And I even did have it flickering on and off. The way that I did that is I went into the base. This background feels a little bright to me. Let's turn that down a bit. But in the base layer, I'm gonna hit Shift A. Let's add a sphere, put it back there. We'll call this background light. Give it a material, let's say an emission shader and give it that kind of gold color and turn this up to like 10 or something like that. And then if we render an image, we should have, boom, a light in the background. We can also turn on bloom and see what that looks like. It is gonna affect all of the layers, but it does kind of create an additional extra glow that, you know, I think part of doing a tune shader is about getting all these, you know, crisp edges and stuff, but I always like to soften it a little bit and kind of create this organic tactile texture to the final render. So you can do this if you'd like, but you absolutely don't have to. And now if I animate that turning on and off together, I can end up with something like this. This is what it looks like coming right out of Blender. Here's with some additional color correction and editing software. And the nice thing is you can just do a little bit of a color grade. You don't have to do a ton of compositing and After Effects. All of these techniques you can use to non-tune Blender projects as well. So you can render out multiple passes in different view layers and composite them together in the compositing tab. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. And uh, if you make any tune animations in Blender, uh, link to them in the comments below. I'd love to check them out.